everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5, your five biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. We are on our road to 80,000 subscribers. I would appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel, especially if you really enjoy this content. We bring it to you Monday through Friday. Without further ado, I don't want to waste too much of your time because we got Switch Pro Talk today. Please don't crucify me. It's just a small story, but it is something. We also get to talk about Nintendo removing the ability to log in through certain social media for some unknown reason, possibly related to the Wii U, and, well, a whole bunch of other stuff as well, because we got five stories. Let's get into the news. And our first story deals with the fact that Nintendo is removing the ability to log into your Nintendo account with Twitter and Facebook. No, they're not removing your ability to post to Twitter and Facebook, but you no longer will be able to log in with this. This is actually a carryover from the Wii U account days and the 3DS, but that being said, it's an open API and a lot of places use it to log in. Nintendo's not giving a reason for removing it, but they do go into an explanation on their website. And here's what they say. As of October 25th, you will no longer be able to link a Facebook or Twitter account to a Nintendo account. It will no longer be possible to create a new Nintendo account using Facebook or Twitter. You will still be able to sign in or create a new Nintendo account with your Google or Apple account. So even though you've already created your account, say with a Facebook account, you can't use that account to log in anymore. You'll have to use the email that was associated to log in. So yeah, that's just the change they're making. It will also no longer be possible to participate in missions through which you can earn my Nintendo points by linking your Nintendo account to Facebook or Twitter. The discontinuation time may be pushed back due to system issues. So tentatively October 25th. And we apologize for the inconvenience this may cause to those who have been using Facebook or Twitter account to sign into their Nintendo account. Now it is strange obviously that they're still supporting Google and Apple as Twitter and Facebook have extremely open APIs that are used almost everywhere. However, Google and Apple APIs are a bit more locked down so it could be for security reasons it also might be related to the fact that they are shutting down the wii u and 3ds essentially <laughs> next year like early next year they're shutting down the wii u and 3ds so it could be one of those situations where they're just eliminating an older system maybe facebook and twitter come back into the fray on their next generation systems after they've had time to rework the back end system either way they're getting rid of it, so it is what it is. So a really neat thing popped up yesterday on the internet. We got to see a look at a cut feature from E3 1999 for Perfect Dark. And that feature is known as Perfect Head. This option isn't a new discovery. We've actually known about this for a long time. It was at E3 1999, but footage of it has not existed on the internet until now. It was uploaded originally by Twitter user Musical1250, and there's an additional video on YouTube, and you can see one of the earliest video game face scan technologies at work that would have allowed you to use your own face in the game. Obviously, this didn't make it into the game, and it was pretty rudimentary, though revolutionary, for the time. So while face scanning is popular today in lots of different sports games like 2K and such, Hey, you know what? This was something Nintendo and Rare were experimenting with way back in the day, and uh, it just never came out. But hey, it's kind of cool taking a look into gaming history. Now, I did mention at the very beginning that we have a little bit of news on Switch Pro, maybe Switch 2. You know, again, Switch Pro is a made-up moniker. Don't get too angry. This is something real, but real in an interesting way. So an NVIDIA employee opened up a smidge today on the supposed next Switch APU. What did they say? So there was comments from an NVIDIA employee found on Linux.org. For those unaware, Linux and Switch's OS FreeBSD are both based off of Unix, making some foundational similarities between the two. Switch's next chip was never only going to be used in the Switch, so that's why this is irrelevant that this came from a Linux place. Really doesn't matter. The chip was always going to be multi-purpose and used in other areas. A confirmed NVIDIA employee had this to say on the website, adding support for the Tegra 239 SoC, which has eight cores in a single cluster. Also moving num underscore clusters to SoC data to avoid over allocating memory for four clusters always. The T239 is the rumored chip being used for Switch Pro or whatever the next system is called, according to Copite 7 Kimmy, a very popular NVIDIA leaker who has been heavily involved in leaking the specs for the new 4000 series of GPUs that were unveiled today, and hey, his leaks were 100% correct. 
In the past, he has claimed that the GPU in the T239 would end up being based on Lovelace in some way, which means it supports DLSS and ray tracing. Though, obviously, how heavily, if at all, ray tracing would actually get used on a Switch 2 is up in the air. What the NVIDIA employee confirms is that the new chip for whatever is coming from the next Nintendo system will have eight cores, up from the four cores Switch uses today. Also, since it's a newer chip, it's likely based on the ARM 78 line of CPUs, which are faster and more power efficient per core than what Switch uses today. None of this has anything to do with when the system is coming, could be a Switch 2, could be a Pro, we have no idea. Could be years away, could be sooner. Only Nintendo and NVIDIA know, and the employee is unwilling to do anything other than focus on getting Linux support ready. Of course, this does mean this chip is ready to probably come out in some form soon, but hey, take this for what it will. Not going to speculate on when this thing is coming. But it looks like eight cores should be the base expectation for Nintendo's next system. So next month we get Near Automata. A lot of people excited for it. And you might be even more excited after today's video because we got our first look at it through a trailer on Switch. And whew, does it look good. It's already giving many fans one of those impossible port vibes for how well the game is running and looking on Switch. Similar in vibes to when we saw Doom Eternal. While not the most graphically intense game, I will say that it does, at first look, seem to hold up very well to the original release. Time will obviously tell when we get our hands on it next month. You know, speaking of getting our hands on things, someone got their hands extremely dirty, getting all grubby on Ubisoft leaks and outed themselves pretty badly. What are we talking about? So the real insider, which was an account on Twitter, got busted. It was leaking a ton of Ubisoft game stuff early before the Ubisoft forward earlier this month. And it turns out the account was ran by Dan Allen Gaming, a pretty popular YouTuber who got invited to play test and see the games before the Ubisoft forward event aired. He outed himself by complete accident when he replied to a tweet directed at the real insider with his main account by mistake. The moment he became aware of the mistake, both accounts were quote unquote deleted. Well, we do cover leaks. One thing you never want to see is someone from the community who was under clear NDA trying to be clever in breaking the NDA for nothing other than notoriety. Most leaks and rumors we get are rarely as spot on as these ones were. And it included like exact details about the upcoming Assassin's Creed game, exact details about uh, Rainbow Six Siege, a whole bunch of de I mean, God, it was it was a leak fest. You would you would think Ubisoft got hacked. That's how much the so much he's been leaking. Anyways, the real insider had direct knowledge clearly, and now we know how that information ended up being so accurate. It is possible that Ubisoft could pursue legal charges against this guy. I don't know if they will, but they can. We actually recently saw the FBI is investigating the person who hacked Rockstar to leak all the GTA 6 stuff. They also apparently went after Uber, so the FBI is investigating that, and that person might be in deep trouble. Again, this is stuff you always want to be careful with, and while it wasn't a hacking, it obviously was not a great look. That being said, I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's Prime 5. I hope you had a really good time. Drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch each and every single one of you in the video tomorrow.